Hi guys and welcome to episode 5 of Let's Play City Skylines. Today I wanted to work on the detail of the city more so than actually expanding it. I'll get into the smaller, well, details of it later on. Uh, but the overall gist of it is that I finally picked up the More Beautifications mod. Which, if you don't know what it is, it basically allows you to place props which are usually used within buildings or parks or zonable elements in the game. Uh, it allows you to actually place those things freely. Uh, so for example, small swimming pools that you would normally get with a park, you can now just plop the swimming pool anywhere free from the grid, uh, which actually helps with many things. Uh, basically allows you to use those little things like hedges and fences, but also lights and benches and small playground elements that you normally come with houses or buildings or parks, um, just pretty much anywhere to decorate your city, uh, which is why I wanted to use this opportunity to get back at some of the things which I really felt my city was missing so far. Um, and one of them really was playgrounds in general, but also elementary schools. Uh, basically, if you go to the Netherlands, there's about one elementary school per one row house. Uh, they're absolutely everywhere. And I figured I would just open a bit of space here and there for some more smaller parks, playgrounds and some elementary schools. Uh, not to mention some other misc stuff which I've sort of missed so far. Uh, especially when it comes to the schools, the prop, you, the um, more beautification mod is actually very useful. Uh, being able to just freely place fences to kind of zone off areas in a very non-grid-like way and being able to just plop down the small playgrounds anywhere is actually very handy uh, which is one of the reasons why I really wanted to return to that thing. Also one of the things that I wanted to get in, um, though it isn't too much of a mu more beautifications thing, is that I wanted to get some more very small shopping things inside the city. Uh, basically in every sort of block of houses or every neighborhood in general you would have at least one small supermarket or a small sh shopping street and that's something which I'm sort of lacking so far. I will go with the more modern approach to it and rather, th rather than having really large shopping malls or shopping streets everywhere I do want to keep the focus a little bit smaller, um, which is also from an in-game perspective since I just can't realistically get completely realistic shopping malls and shopping streets in with that really look convincingly Dutch. Um, so yeah, that's something I wanted to get into as well. And just random decorations here and there like this little industrial district where I figured I could just go crazy with the hedges anyway, because that's actually quite fun. Um, so far I find that just using separate bushes is actually a lot better for making hedges than using the actual hedge assets. Uh, because even though the actual hedge assets are obviously much more realistic, uh, these hedges you just have so much more freedom in where you actually place them and the asset assets. As great as they are, they don't actually conform to the terrain, so you can't really use them on hillsides. And using these hedges to sort of decorate slopes is something that I've sort of found in real life quite often and wanted to give it a shot and I kind of like it so far. Might want to <laughs> get addicted to that and do it a bit more. Uh, obviously one of the other things which I wanted to do was get back to parks and actually make them look like parks. A uh, pretty important point of feedback that I did receive was that I should stop making all the parks entirely ornamental, which is, which is actually a good point. I tend to actually get lost in making parks um, well, look nice in terms of foliage, but actually forgetting to leave grass open just to have a ball, a game of frisbee or play football or stuff like that. Um, so that's something that I'll get to in the future, but it's really not something that I can address right now, given the fact that this episode is already recorded quite a while ago right now. Oh, and something that I should probably say, uh, which you've probably already noticed by now, is that this is the first episode which was recorded after I actually recorded the first five episodes. Uh, so this was recorded after I actually got YouTube comment feedback and um, found out that I actually did want to upload this to YouTube, which is why from now on I'm not just addressing the feedback more often, um, which I couldn't really do just accidentally before. Um, but also I think the quality should be at least a little bit better right now. Uh, that said, I can't really make it too great uh, since my computer just isn't too great and doesn't like City Skylines too much, I can't put the dynamic resolution much higher than this. And other than that, I haven't got any graphical options that can make the game look better than it currently does. 
Not to mention the fact that, and yes, this is my own fault, but it's not something that I'll just stop doing. Um, I render my videos twice, once to actually make the time lapses, and then another time to actually commentate over it, which, yeah, you might say is redundant. I might as well just commentate over um, Sony Vegas um, time lapsed footage raw without having to render it first. Um, but I just kind of like to work this way more. Plus, it actually allows you to just get a small stack of videos and then just commentate them in a more higher resolution. Um, <laughs> that grammar makes sense. Um, so yeah, that's that's two of the reasons why the videos won't be too high res, but I do think as much of a um, opponent as I am of the entire 60 FPS debacle, I don't think it's really too important uh, for a time lapse, obviously, there's a huge, huge important um, improvement over having a time lapse in 60 FPS rather than 30 FPS. Uh, since there is a lot of movement in here, um, though it, it is very jagged when I move around a lot in the game. I've no idea what causes that, um, but it's something I might want to look into. And if anybody has any idea why that happens, um, then uh, feel free to shoot, because I have no idea what causes it. Like, if the camera is just still, uh, which, oh, well, that was one other thing I should probably address. Uh, so this was also um, when I finally decided that I would just keep the camera still like a sane person. And um, it sort of results in a lot, in a, in a much more watchable time lapse in the end. Uh, so that should also improve the quality. But yeah, I the FPS seems fine and the resolution seems fine to me as well on just the still shots where I don't move around. Uh, but as soon as I start moving, um, it just blurs up a little bit. Uh, but the frame rate also drops, which I get that it blurs up, but the frame rate is quite weird. Um, but yeah, needless to say, that should be an issue, which shouldn't be too much of an issue anymore. But still, if anybody knows anything about it, I, it would be really appreciated <laughs> to tell something about how I might be able to fix it, because it, it, it is still quite a nuisance. Anyway, to actually talk about the game for a second. Um, I wanted to get a small shopping street over here, and uh, now this was exactly where I felt the in-game limitations just make it too damn near impossible to actually get something realistic going. Um, and I'm pretty sure I probably explained this at some later stage when I recorded some commentaries for real-time footage in the future. Um, I can't even tell the future and past apart anymore. But um, I just can't really get the very realistic Dutch look of shopping streets right, uh, since they have a very distinct style, at least the slightly older ones do, um, where they really have a row of one large building with shops underneath it. And it, it's almost like a, a, a very small interconnected mini mall sort of thing. And at the moment, I just don't really know of any way to make them. Um, so the small collection of commercial buildings are really just supposed to emulate, emulate them, but they're not 100% the real deal. Uh, other than that, I'm actually quite happy about the elementary schools, uh, pretty much everywhere in the middle of all these little neighborhoods. Um, in hindsight, I could have said that I uh, probably wanted to make them stand out a little bit more and not just remove one grid of houses and replace it with an elementary school, uh, but rather put them in their own little zones and parks and things like that, because they usually are. But, you know, in hindsight, uh, that was kind of hard to do since I added these things later on. So I'm quite, I'm a little bit more happy about having these elementary schools here than having just endless row houses everywhere, to say the least, really. Uh, this is also where I finally got back to actually placing parking lots down and removing some of these flats because it was a little bit too dense and actually replacing it with um, parking lots to make sure that that is all all right. I actually really love this parking lot. Um, this parking lot brush, it's, it's something that you can just freely place everywhere, but cars actually use it, which is actually really awesome and makes for a very flex flexible tool to actually make some parking lots as um, really unimportant of a city element, it seems. It's quite important to me. Uh, also, no, this was recorded before I knew that the foliage um, tool actually had a brush using which you can delete trees. Uh, so you don't have to individually delete trees. This was, this was like 20 minutes of me deleting individual trees. Um, I didn't have to torture myself that way. Uh, but I, I know now that you can just use a brush. So um, <laughs> don't have to tell me about that. 
Um, but yeah, it, it was actually quite funny to watch that back. Uh, over here, I wanted to have a small area, sort of like an industrial district. I don't quite know what you would call them or if there's even a name for it. Uh, but usually just outside the city, you have these districts where you have the larger supermarkets or other types of markets, um, whatever you would have in your country, really. Uh, and an Ikea, of course, because you can't not have an Ikea. So this is uh, my designated Ikea zone, Ikea and more. And I'm actually, in, in, very, in hindsight, I'm very happy with this area. One of my favorite areas so far. Um, but I'll get into that a little bit as I finish these roundabouts over here. I also wanted to have a very typical Dutch dike over here in a sense that I wanted to make sure that I would always have a road going over the top of it. And if possible, also a bicycle lane um, at the bottom of the dike and perhaps a road here and there as well. And maybe in the future, also have a very small little town attached to the, to the dike. Uh, just to get a more rural feel into this entire area, because I do plan on making that entire area over there a um, farming zone rather than a um, large city like everything is at the moment. Uh, but yeah, this is pretty much where my IKEA was built. And not too. It, this is really not too interesting, and I don't even know why I'm such a big fan uh, of looking at it or even doing at it. Uh, <laughs> doing it. But um, yeah, I'm actually very happy with this zone. It sort of got that very, that very edge of the city look eventually, uh, with just a couple of offices and large stores, and surprisingly, it's even a bit of a traffic chaos. I expected that not too many people would go over here, but um, you know, I, I'm obviously commentating this a while after this episode was recorded, and by now, like the city just floods to the IKEA, which is a bit of an issue. Um, but that's something to be tackled later on, or just not. Because in a sense, having traffic jams is realistic too. That's one way to brush that argument away, I suppose. And on the other side, I just wanted to get some simple offices in. And one more, which I actually wanted to use the in-game mall for, since it really has a perfect shape for it. Uh, it's not too large, um, but it's also not too small, <laughs> to put it that stupid way. And... Um, it's, it's just a building that I kind of like most of many of the template buildings that you get. I'll definitely remove the water pumps eventually. They're really just there as a temporary fix until I actually make a um, water filter area. Um, but so far, they're really just there to be a functional tool to not have to do the water area yet. Uh, because I'm not too big of a fan of doing it so far. Now this area will also function as a transition really to the rural landscape that I plan on making next episode actually. Uh, not just in terms of traffic, um, since this is going to be the main entrance way to the rest of the area. Which is one of the reasons why I have always wanted to actually have a roundabout uh, intersection over here since it has such a high capacity. Uh, but it's also sort of that transition from the real cityscape within the city. Um, to the rural landscape with really just grassy fields, uh, which I do have to add. There are a couple of things which I probably should say beforehand, um, before people start worrying about them. Um, I, I'm not going to actually add any canals or the very Dutch typical ditches, since I've tried and see, um, kind of looked around for ways to do them and actually build them in a realistic way and I couldn't really get them right. And I figured in the end I wanted to go with something that would look right rather than going for the more realistic option even if it just would look very weird. Um, some of the ditches were just floating or the textures didn't match and I can't use actual water because of water physics. And this means that I also am not really going to go for the very typical cow grasslands that you find in Holland, um, on most places in Holland, um, since I just can't realistically divide them and make them look convincing with ditches. So it's mostly going to be um, crops, uh, things like that, that type of agriculture, which is much more like Eastern Holland, um, or East <laughs> the Eastern Netherlands, I should say, before anyone gets mad. Um, but it's it's sort of a way to get around having to try and get ditches in here. I might eventually do it if like new, a new asset comes out to make them, but so far it hasn't really worked. Anyway, that's it for this video, so thank you for watching and see you later.